everybody. Welcome to Breaking Bread with Allie and Gabby. I'm Gabby Loren. And I'm Allie Valerio. And today we have Chaya Sarah Rabinowitz back again because of her passion of self-love. We're going to be discussing self-love and how to kind of treat yourself a little bit better so that you have a better well-being and it leads to more happiness in your life. Now, I know personally for me, self-love is something I've definitely struggled with over the years because I feel like if you're younger and you grow up without necessarily like the love of a parent or them showing you love in the way in which is emotional, then it can be hard to connect to self-love and love yourself. Plus, with all of the distractions from today and social media with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and everything else that comes along with it. You know, it is scientifically proven that your happiness is affected and your self-esteem is affected by usage of these platforms. And that's because when you are looking at upward social comparison, you're actually feeling more negative about yourself. And that plays into relationships, partnerships, you know, your own self-esteem, like I mentioned. So um, here today, I want to focus on how we can kind of be more positive and more loving to ourselves because self-love is the love of the self. And here Chaya Sarah is to pretty much give us methods and ways in which we can do that. So Chaya Sarah, why are you so passionate about self-love and what are some things that we can do to love ourselves more? Thank you so much guys for bringing this topic up. I think it's the the reason why I love it so much is because I feel like I want to help heal the world. And because I had so much self-hate when I was younger and I hated myself, I didn't know how to get out of it. And the only way I got out of it was through my awesome teachers, Rufka Marka Perlman and Hanna Lieberman, Michelle Abraham. And I want to thank Christina Stell for really sitting with me and guiding me to be able to do this. And I want to thank you guys for letting me get this opportunity. Yay! Okay, that's a a side point. Now, (laughs) why am I obsessed obsessed with self-love? Let me tell you why. The world is obsessed with the word love. If you say, you take a look at billboards, magazines, movies, every minute, because the world is running after love. We spend millions of dollars, yes or no, on this (laughs) stuff, right? So the question is, why are we so obsessed with the word love? And why are we so into love? Did you ever think about that? I just wondered if you ever thought about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's human nature. What do you think, Allie? Yeah, of course. I mean, also like you, Gabby, it's it's funny to hear, like I have so many incredible women in my life who are talented, smart, multi-passionate, and beautiful. And I think that we all struggle with self-love because we base our worth on like what we can do for others. I'm speaking at the point of like being a woman. Um, so like I know growing up, I valued myself based on what I did and based on my accomplishments and um, luckily for us, we're all attractive. So, um, I think that it was also based on looks and that's how self-love is kind of cultivated. So we almost have to like, un, unthink about the way that we look at self-love. And I've definitely struggled with that my entire life. Wow. I'm sorry that it's been so hard for so many people. So many people. I'm not a single woman who hasn't struggled with self-love. Right. And I think that if we follow some of these ideas, they may be interesting and different. If we follow them, they really can help us out. And hopefully we'll be able to try and see today if we get some good tips and good tools to go out there and make the difference that you want to make and really love yourself in all that you do. Why are we obsessed with love? Because the most amazing answer, because God is love. God created you by two loving parents who were created. God made a world out there that's just so beautiful. There's colors, there's there's scenery, pictures, people that you love. And God gave all this to you to help you be able to be in a world of love. Meaning to say that by people loving you, people being kind to you, people giving you compliments and people showing you that you're loved, you will feel some kind of love. Does that make sense? And then when you go out in the world and you see like, you know, a breathtaking sunrise or a breathtaking sunset. You're like, oh, this is gorgeous. Like, wow. And God's like, I made this for you to let you feel my love because love is the thing that I want you to feel the most. And the only way you can feel it is through experiences, people, and beauty. Well, I feel like God's love is given to you because he loves you. That's why he made 
all these things come in your direction. And when you know that God loves you, then you know you're lovable. Like for me personally, if I was missing it in the home and I was missing it with people, I was connecting it to other things like beauty and experiences and like the things I did, my activities, um, moments. And then I think from still acknowledging those things, you eventually find people that are brought into your life through God and Hashem that will show you that self-love that you were missing in that one area. So I think that like, if you feel like it's not there, there's other ways in which it will be presented to you later down the line. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And Ali, what are you saying? You know, the biggest question though, is that what is love? Like, okay, so love is everything, right? Love is everywhere. And if we're created in the eyes of Hashem, then love is in everything because God created us out of love, right? Yeah. But then we get so distracted by everything that's going on in the world that we lose our sense of, of self and we kind of forget how to love ourselves. So the bigger question I think is what, what is love and what is self-love and how do you find it? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. We're going to go into it like slowly as we, as we get into this whole discussion. Yeah, I think love is just multidimensional. So let's go over, let's go over this. Okay. So what I want to say is that there's one very beautiful foundation in the world that God gave us as one of the very, very strong mitzvot that we have to do. And that mitzvah is the Ahafta Lareacha Kamocha. It says, love your friend like you love yourself. What does that even mean? Love your friend like you love yourself. Well, let's think. When it comes to a friend, you'll do anything for them. You're there for them when they're in a bad mood. When they need you, you give them hugs. You make them feel special. You compliment them. Oh, so if you're doing this for your friend, God says, now I want you to do it for you. If you could do it for a friend, then that's how you can learn how to do it for yourself. So when we learn how to do things for ourselves, we'll be able to be much better people out in the world. That's a concept that's like a concept that changes your life because Go look out at your friend. Be like, how can I make her feel special? Oh, I'll buy her something that she loves. Guess what? Buy yourself something that you love and say, I'm buying it for you because I love you. Give yourself love. Sit down with yourself and talk to yourself. It feels weird. When we talk to ourselves all the energy, we talk to ourselves, say, oh, I hate this, or you're so dumb, you're such a loser. You know, we tell ourselves things all day. So why do you say to yourself, what's going on with you? I'm so sorry to talk to you. How can I help you? Talking to yourself the way you talk to a friend is a way to rebuild the you that wants to be loved. Because we knock ourselves all the time, right? We say a lot of negative self-talk. We justify that. But once if we say good things to ourselves, that is one of the ways that we can really help yourself feel so much better. Wow. It's kind of interesting because they say like you are your biggest supporter, right? So right. you take that same mentality and talk to yourself as if you were an outsider or a family member or a good friend. Yeah. You're filling the void of whatever is missing in your life for that person or experience that isn't there to give you love in that moment. You're filling that with your own compassion and self-love. Can you mm. imagine? Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. so, so what I want to tell you is, this is a wild story. There's this guy, his name is J.T. Fox. He used to be the biggest loser. He used to literally be a couch surfer. He didn't have any money. And he hated himself more than anything in the world. He learned about how to love himself and build himself. And he became the biggest motivator out there in the world. And anyone in his audience that builds themselves up enough, he says, I will interview you. And if I think you're good enough, you will join me on going on tour and you will make thousands of dollars. Why? He has, he speaks to 4,000 people in one shot. Each person that comes to one of his meetings pays $500. So if you imagine how rich this guy is, $4,000, 4,000 people, $500. And anyone in the audience could join him on tour and become millionaires if he thinks you're good enough. Okay. So I went to one of these things and I was amazed by his motivation. I'm sitting down during lunch and a woman comes up to me, her name is Stacy. And she goes, hi, can I sit with you? I'm like, sure, come sit down. She's like, do you know that I fly around with JT Fox? I'm like, did you just say what? <laughs> what? You fly around with JT Fox? I don't believe it. I'm like, whoa, what is your secret? How did this happen? She goes, I'll tell you. 
I learned about self-love and I reprogrammed my whole brain. And every single day I do something, an act of self-love. And he was so impressed with me. He said, yo, you're coming on my show. I said, what do you see to yourself? She goes, yo, you're going to think it's crazy, but this is what I do. She says, I look in the mirror and I go, you're awesome. You're going to rock it, girl. You've got the power. You can do anything you want. And I was just like, wait a second. I love doing that. You do that? She's like, absolutely. And she's like, and you know what else I do? I'm like, what? She's like, I give myself hugs every day. I'm like, really? She's like, I just want you to know that I was not like this. I even, I have the recording of her speaking because I was so excited about her. She's like, I never was like this. She's like, I was a regular person. I wasn't happy. I was very, you know, disconnected from myself. And she said, once I did this, my whole life changed. She said, whole life. She said, she's like, you think your whole self to another person because when you feel good, you go out to another person, another person meets you, they're like, oh, you can feel their positive energy when you meet them, you know? She told me that everyone in her family looks at her differently. Every person that meets her looks at her differently. She says, I'm a new person because of self-love. I said, but Stacy, what if you don't feel it when you look in the mirror? She goes, doesn't matter. Just do it and you'll feel it. It takes time to feel. She said it took her about three months to transform herself. And I said, yo, woman, you rock it. Thank you so much. And I was so impressed with her because she really meant it and it transformed her life. So you see the power of action. If you do crazy things that feel weird or like, what am I doing? It could actually change your life if you just learn how to talk to yourself. The way you talk to other people, we're going to teach you how to look in the mirror. I try to do it. Even if it's like a little weird, but we're going to make it sound normal. <laughs> so what do you think? I want to speak to 12 weeks for a second. 12 weeks is like, how long it takes to create a lifestyle. So by by consistently doing that over and over again, it becomes habitual and you don't have to even think about it. It just becomes who you are and then you start to embody that. So when I do my fitness programs, every program is minimum 12 weeks because I want them to build a lifestyle. So that's very fascinating. Look at it as like every day I'm building a beautiful me. Like let's say for example, you're making a plant, right? You're, you're, you know, you, you tr you're trying to have a beautiful plant. It's not going to come in two seconds, but every day of sunlight and water and, you know, even, even talking lovingly to a plant, it helps a plant grow. You know that, right? There's actually a study done on talking lovingly to the plant and the plants that were spoken to lovingly, they blossomed and they had beautiful, beautiful results. And the ones spoken to negatively, actually, you can see them, they're shriveling. Just the word that you say to a plant transforms the plant. So could you imagine us? Oh, so think to yourself, a plant takes about three months, four months, but don't look at it as a long time thing. Look at it as every day I am planting a new me, a me that's going to be full of happiness and full of joy because I can change and I can believe it. Whatever you tell yourself, you believe. And when you tell yourself, I can do this, just by telling yourself I can change, you already impacted your brain to start believing that something good can change for you. Amen. So no matter where you come from, you could come from a home that was abusive, you come from a home that nobody cared about, you come from a place you never had any friends, doesn't matter. You are in charge of your life and you can change your life in two seconds with a mindset and then watch day by day how it's going to change. Yeah. You can do it, people. Let's go for it. What you, what you say to yourself definitely manifests into how you feel and also how you act 100%. I think your point with the woman who was at this Jay Fox event who works with him is speaking to everything, every point you're making right now, because if someone is practicing this and looking in the mirror, even if they feel foolish, they're eventually going to manifest it, like Ali's saying. So that's exactly what that woman did. Proof is in the pudding. And so... You're just giving us validation and examples of how this actually can manifest in life. I just want to say too, something that just made me think is that um, when I quit my job to start my coaching business, I went to Tony Robbins, who greatly inspires me. He's like oh, he's a figure like JT Fox. Um, and his whole thing is like, you set a new standard, you step up and whatever you focus on grows. And where focus goes, energy flows. So whether you're saying negative things to yourself every single day, that's what you're going to manifest in your life because you're telling yourself what exactly it is that you believe about yourself. So when you're saying positive things like, I'm beautiful, I'm amazing, I'm powerful, like I'm the best coach in the world, like I'm the self-love master, you literally 
become that because thoughts are things and we become what we say to ourselves. Like what you were saying about the water study with the plants is we talked about this on, I believe our second podcast about manifesting is that we are literally 75% water. And when you talk to water, you talk to plants, it changes the molecular structure of the plant. So when you say, I love you, it becomes like this beautiful crystalline structure. And when you say, I hate you, like it becomes like, and webs. They've even done this too with like spider webs and like the way that you talk to spider webs. Um, it's super fascinating, but that makes a lot of sense that what you say to yourself is who you become and how you act. So hold a hundred percent agree about that. Wow, that's so incredible to hear how serious this is. Yeah. So tell us more about your journey with self-love. Like why yeah. why did you get into this? Why is it important for us to talk about this? And what can we do? Like what tools can we use to strengthen our self-love? Yes. So this is gonna be something a little bit different than just talking to yourself. This is gonna be an understanding about your little inner child and I love it so much because it's so healing. So Carl Jung is the one who taught us about the inner child and I went to an incredible like four-day healing retreat with Kamaka Perlman where we went inside and we did inner child work. We met our inner child and he gave us an exercise that I love so much that I want to share with you guys about a meditation on how to talk to your inner child and lovingly let your child feel that love that it deserves to feel. And she explained to us the concept of meditation. That if you put meditation on at night before you go to sleep and you just let your brain do the work and you don't have to do anything. You can just relax, enjoy, and your brain gets affected subconsciously just by having meditations in the background. And the power of it does huge things to your brain. And I started doing it every single night. I listen to a meditation wherever I choose on self-love, I choose on I am safe, I am secure. There's so many things on YouTube that you can go on and it literally is so relaxing to go to sleep in and so empowering because when you go to sleep like that, you wake up like that. However you feel when you go to sleep is how you wake up, right? So your brain had a whole bunch of positive things throughout the night. So now when you wake up, it's like, I'm ready to go for some good, some good stuff. So what I want to say is that I want to do a beautiful meditation with you. It's called Marco Perlman taught us this. And we're going to experience this. And one thing before the meditation that I want to share with you is from my very special emotional healer, Yochi, taught us that when you put your hand on your heart for 90 seconds and you say loving, kind words to yourself, especially when you're in a bad mood or something's hard for you, it helps heal your heart. So let's say, for example, somebody upset you. So you go and you sit down and you're like, hi, Sarah, what happened? Allie, what happened? And you say, look, I'm really upset about this person. She really hurt my feelings. So you say, okay, I'm sorry, so hard for you. You're not alone. There's nobody here to comfort you. It's just me. And I want to be here for you. And you put your hand on the top of your other hand, like warm, loving feeling. And, and you rub your hand and you say loving, kind words for less than two minutes, 90 seconds, less than two minutes. And it helps your heart heal. And I do it all the time. I started learning how to do this. And we did it in the whole room. And everyone was like, whoa, I never dreamt that healing could be so easy. She said it happens right away. Your heart feels the message right away. And already your heart feels calmer. So these ideas can just show you that like little small things can change your life. Interesting. So now, yeah. I was going to say that there's many moments in which I've had like crazy anxiety, especially mm -hmm. associated with a former medical condition with thyroiditis. And wow. um, in those moments where I just felt like heart palpitations and like just crazy pressure, I would literally try to like put my hand on my heart, just as you said, just like calm myself if I could, you know, to make it feel a little bit better. Um, and then, it, so I think it plays into not only like self-love in moments where somebody said something bad to you, but also if you're having like a panic attack or anxiety and you're just like unsettled, the energy is unsettling. That's a way to, I think, bring it back to home base by doing that. Wow. Did it make you feel better? Yeah, it does. All the time. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
wow, that's so beautiful. It's good to hear like someone who's literally having like, you know, a real anxiety attack that could actually calm you down. It's good yeah. to know like the proof is in the pudding. This is so exciting to hear that you actually experienced it. Mm -hmm. So we're not weirdos to do this. It's not too weird. Is no. that okay? Because like people might know that people might think the ideas are so new, it's gonna feel a little uncomfortable. So I want to explain to everyone that like even if it feels weird, if Gabby, if you're telling us that you did it, then it feels so much more doable. You of know? course. And I think on top of doing what you're talking about, breathing techniques at the same time help as well. So if you're breathing in and out, you know, in for three to five and then out. Um, it also is changing the, the, your body from being in fight or flight mode um, to, I, I forget the, the medical terminology, but you're using yeah, parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous system. Thank you, Allie. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, sympathetic, sympathetic, I believe is fight or flight. Parasympathetic is the other one that's with digestion. So when you're breathing, you're literally calming down your fight or flight response, which I believe is your parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. So what I want to do with you guys is a beautiful meditation where we're going to meet our little girl and we're going to talk so kindly and lovingly to her that you're going to feel a feeling of like real beautiful love that you really deserve to feel. So I invite everybody to relax ourselves and let's try it out and see how it feels to meet your little child. Are you ready to meet your little person, your little, little girl? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. So let's relax ourselves. I'm going to close our eyes. I'm going to close my eyes so we can like really get this meditation to feel, feel very real. Close your eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let your whole body feel completely relaxed and calm. Let your feet be on the ground. Just so calm and relaxed. Let your back fall back into the chair so you feel calm and relaxed. Your arms next to your thighs. Just the most calmest feeling. I was going to do this quickly to let your body just feel that calm, gentle feeling of nowhere to go, nothing to do, just time to relax. Let your mouth get a break from talking. Let your mouth be closed. Let your eyes be closed. And just let all that calmness come over you and feel like you're just going into a new zone. And as you sit here, I want you to imagine yourself outside in a beautiful scenery in God's loving world. There's a whole bunch of friends of yours are sitting around in a huge circle. Everyone's sitting around with you. And you're enjoying the sun shining and you're enjoying the birds chirping. It's the most beautiful day. And suddenly, your sister comes running and she says, guess what? Mom had a baby and she lets me bring the baby to visit all your friends. And all your friends could say hello to the baby. And we're getting so excited. Oh my God, a newborn baby. I want to hold this child. Oh, so sweet and pure. And everybody gets a chance to look at this little baby. A baby that's so innocent. Picture the scene of like somebody with like blue eyes and brown hair, little tiny thing being held in your arms. When you look at this child, what do you think? You're so pure, you're so precious, you're so sweet, you're so lovable. You give a little kiss on the forehead, you cuddle her so tight, you hold the baby. And now you have a chance to tell the baby whatever you want before she goes out into the real world and meets all the challenges that she doesn't know about. What loving, kind words can you tell the baby to help her feel loved and relaxed as she goes out into the world? I want to give you a few seconds to look at this little baby's eyes while everybody's 
looking at her and wanting to wish her the best, she's being sent around in a circle to everyone to wish you were so beautiful words. When it comes to your turn, what do you want to tell her? What loving words do you want to tell your this little baby as she looks into your eyes and you want to wish her to go out into the world? I'm going to be silent now for a few seconds to give you a chance to talk to this little baby. Look into her eyes and tell her some beautiful words. And now, right before we come back into the world, we're going to give the baby a chance to get a blessing from the people in the circle, from all your friends. What kind of blessing do you want to bless her? Do you want to bless her for success, to believe in herself, to know that she's loved, to know that she can accomplish anything? I want you to think about a blessing. And when you think of this blessing, I want you to take a piece of paper Write it down, and as you write it down, the little baby is going to take this and we'll put it into her heart. You're going to put it on her heart as you send her the blessing. So she could take it in with her into the world, but the new world that she's going to be coming into to the real world. And you're going to give her the feeling that she is loved and cherished and that you care about her so much. So let's give her a blessing, write it down on a piece of paper, and then she's going to go out into the real world. Give you a few seconds to give her the blessing that she needs. Okay, I want you to take a minute to write down the blessing that you wrote down so when you come out of the meditation you can share with us what kind of blessing you gave this little baby and she put it in her heart and it's being taken with her out into the world she now can know whatever feelings and blessings you want to give to her so let's breathe in breathe out sorry to take you away from this beautiful place you can come back here anytime you need let your little baby know that she is loved and you want to give her the biggest hug on your way out. Welcome back, everybody, to the real world. Mm. So good. So, Allie, tell us what you got over there. That was really powerful. Um, I sometimes I forget about how like what we were just saying like how quickly you can change your state and how you can go from like oh or like this isn't working and then all of a sudden you can close your eyes and breathe and put your hand on your heart and think about wow like I'm gonna go back to Tony Robbins like it's it's in you it's it's it is you like it's the real you like your heart is everything and when you're a child you're born as this beautiful kind innocent being and you're right Haya, you were created out of love and you come into the world and then all of a sudden like you're supposed to figure everything out and what i told myself was like you're loving, you're kind, you're beautiful, you're infinite, you're strong, you're courageous, you're bold, and you're unique. And sometimes I forget that, like you want to be like everyone else. And I think that's when you detract from your own self love, because you're trying to assimilate, you're trying to accommodate other people. But when you go back to just being you and who you're created to be, you're like, wow i am special i am unique i am beautiful so thank you that was a really powerful meditation and it definitely brought me back to like who i am so So i want you to take these ideas write down the words that you told yourself and these words put them around your room (laughs) 
and tell that. yourself, this is who you are, woman. This is who you are. The sticky note homework. Just put yeah, sticky yeah, yeah, yeah. all over your house. Yes. Let's yeah, I actually, I actually have posts all over my house, positive affirmations, all over my room and all over my mirror. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, if you write these words down, put them wherever you see them in the morning or whatever, and let these words be the words that are the new words I get to tell yourself. And you feel, did you see your little baby? Was there like a moment that you felt you saw a little baby over there? Yeah, I, I pictured myself as like a little baby. I was like, wow. I was she's so cute and innocent and lovable yeah. and unique. Yes, a hundred percent. And somehow I lose I've I lost that in like wanting to be perfect or wanting to be loved and feeling like I need to like do things to be loved. I were we talking about this gab? I don't remember, but um, I think as women too, and even like our rabbi this morning, he's doing these lives about love and like relationships. And I think the biggest problem is that people don't love themselves and they're looking for love through someone else to validate them and tell yeah. them they're worthy, which is something that I'm super, like I've gotten into a lot of toxic relationships seeking love, but really the most important foundation is self-love and if two people love themselves in a relationship then they can come together and be even stronger and better so wow yeah. I'm so glad you got to experience that was so amazing. thank you for sharing that How are you feeling, Gab? um it was interesting it was kind of hard because i feel like i was a little distracted um the first time i did this with kaya sarah but it was like a different meditation a different guided uh, story i felt like so um whole like it was really beautiful to be able to like what well, I was saying earlier fill a void like be there for that part of myself that I didn't feel like anyone was there for in the past um with this one today though I really just envisioned more so me giving to others like so even with that baby example I felt like I was giving what I needed when I was when I, what I missed out on when I was younger. So like I was giving that baby confidence, like, you know, you're going to make mistakes and life isn't going to be perfect, but it's okay. Like you have the freedom to do that. You have the freedom to be who you want to be and I'll be here for you. And you need somebody to give you a hug and give you support. Mm -hmm. So that. that was my experience. I love that. I love that you like gave yourself confidence. That's the sweetest thing ever. It's so cute. You never know, like, you know, each person has a different experience and that's why it's so cool when everyone does their own thing. So you can write some things for yourself, Gabby, like over your house, like you can do it. You're okay. Whatever it is, or even on your mirror. So you look in the mirror, you can say that. So thank you guys. It's so exciting. So I'll tell you what, so this is going to lead us into the mirror work, which is really, really fun and cool. That is from Hannah Lieberman and from Louise Hay. That it may feel, yeah. I love Louise Hay. Feel, yeah? Yes, love it. Hay House all the way. <laughs> hey, all the way. <laughs> so it may feel a little bit interesting to actually like look in the mirror and say kind things to yourself because you're like, how do you do that? Whoever looks in the mirror talks to themselves. But really, let's think about it. When you look in the mirror, you're like, oh, I hate my eyes. Oh, my lips are so big. We look, we talk negative to ourselves in the mirror all the time, right? Yes or no? Yeah, or I feel like I gained 10 pounds like over the last right? week. So why not switch it around? And instead of looking down at yourself in the mirror, why do you say to yourself, oh my gosh, look at me. Anyway, you, you can't change the way you look. You can't change your eyes. You can't change your nose. You can't change your mouth. You can put makeup on it, but you can't change it. So why are you looking at your eyes and be like, Oh my gosh, my eyes are so beautiful. You know, God made me beautiful. Thank you, God, for making me beautiful. Thank you, God, for my ears and for my hair. I really love my hair. You know, it's so beautiful. Like, look at your body and appreciate it instead of putting it down. Have gratitude. You have people now in hospitals attached to machines. They have no makeup. They feel horrible. They feel so low. And they would do anything to be able to just be in any position of gaining some weight and just you know, feeling normal. So why not look at what you got and be appreciative of it? What a gift your body is, what a gift it is that it's working and that you have it. And you can be able to realize that you have the greatest gift in the world. You have 
ability to compliment yourself, look at yourself and say good things to yourself. And then you'll be able to feel much happier inside because you're telling yourself the feelings that you want to feel like if you ask someone, you know, could you tell me, does this outfit look good on you, right? And let's say they say, no, you look really fat in it. You don't want them to say that. You want them to say, no, it looks really good on you, right? So you do it for yourself. You say, no, you look really good. Why don't you look in the mirror, say some kind things to yourself, smile at yourself. Guess what? Mirrors always smile back. Shut up! Because when you smile at yourself, you feel happier inside. Appreciate what you got. Appreciate about your body. Appreciate this is a gift that God gave you. And use the ability to focus on the beautiful things that God gave you. Instead of focusing on what you don't have, focus on what you do have. And let that be your mirror. You look in the mirror every single day. If you say kind things to yourself, can you imagine how good you feel when you look in the mirror? What do you think about that? It's, it's like the best way that you can change your state is just being grateful for everything you have. It changes the way your brain functions when you say that. And we are what we say we are, right? I am beautiful. You're right. Amen. Hi. Yeah. And I think the important thing to know here is that when you are doing mirror work and saying these affirmations about yourself, that once you start believing them and manifesting it, you're going to attract so much into your life. It's just like the person who may feel insecure and think nobody likes them or no one's ever going to want to be with them or they think they're ugly. Well, if you start saying to yourself in the mirror, I am beautiful. I am worthy. Like I will attract the man of my dreams. And then you exude that confidence when you walk out of your house, the same confidence you had talking to yourself in the mirror. Well, guess what? That energy that you're changing now, you're actually altering because of your words is going to attract the, pe the right people into your life. It will attract the right circumstances and situations into your life. So it's really important to emphasize that the words that we are saying, like we mentioned earlier, are forever changing the energy around us. And your presence alone is going to change the perspective of the people around you. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, have you ever looked at somebody and, and I'm not saying you looked at them in a way of like, oh, this person's a beautiful model or they deserve to be a, an actor. Like they should be in movies. I'm saying like, have you ever looked at someone and even in a bar and been like, wow, this person has an amazing personality. I like this person. I like their energy. Well, that's exactly where you're going to be sitting at when you change your inner dialogue and your outer dialogue. 100%. Have you guys seen I Feel Pretty? I feel like this is the best example of this. Oh my God. She like, she's on a bicycle on Soul Cycle. She falls off, hits her head. And she's like, she's Amy Schumer. Like she's a little overweight. She's not the most beautiful woman, but she's not ugly, but she wakes up and she's like, oh my God, I'm beautiful. Like, has anyone oh. seen how amazing I look? And she just starts walking around with this crazy confidence. And like, she was working at a job where she worked in a basement. She gets promoted to work and she's working for like a modeling agency. And she's so freaking confident. She attracts like the most gorgeous guy and nothing has changed except for the fact that she believes that she's beautiful and she's smart and she's talented. And Whoa. you guys, if you, I like, I want to watch it again tonight, but like, that is the best example of, wow, what you say to yourself is how people think about who you are and also what you think about who you are. And that's how you show up in the world. So best movie ever. Everyone watch it. <laughs> Talk about mirror work. <laughs> you have such a good point. Like that, I want. I want to like you know jump into the next point about like how so many of us want to be impressed by other people. Like social media totally does that to us. It's like a false illusion of like you look at other people you're like oh my god she has the best life. I I just want to be like her. I just so much things like I'm gonna have her life. I'm gonna be so happy. Right. Social media gives us idea that everyone's having the best life. It's not true. I want to share a wild example. I met a girl who was brought up religious, left religion, and came back. And I asked her, what happened to you in between? She said there was an actress, that she was obsessed with this actress. And she said, all I wanted to do was be like her. She said, I got her haircut. I changed my, whole, my eye colors. I changed my clothing. She changed her closet, like all the things in her closet became a certain like style. She, she said, I did research on this woman, every detail. She said, because I was so miserable with myself, I thought if I'm going to be like her, she looks so happy, I'll be able to, you know, now be all that I want to be. Can you imagine? 
She told me that it took her a year. She transformed her whole life and made herself look like this person. And she said, I just want you to know I was miserable, miserable. And I was like, really? She's like, I couldn't believe. I thought this is the best way to go. She said, I gave it myself. I didn't want to see anybody. Nobody wanted to be friends with me. It didn't help anything. It just made things worse. So I asked like, but how did you change? She said, through self-love. She, she realized I don't need to be anybody. I only need to be me. That's who God wants me to be. God, God wants me to be me, the one that he put me down to be in this world. That's the only person I need to be. Nobody else. And if I'm going to be me, I'll be the happiest because I have so much of me that I can use in this world and be. And that's the only way that I could really, really be me if I let myself come out. Yeah, this goes into the whole uh, point that I brought up when we first opened up this discussion. What actually is happiness? Happiness doesn't come from societal pressures or like what we think would be happiness. Like we're conditioned as humans and in society to think, oh, if I reach this goal, I'm going to be happier. Oh, if I get this income, I'm going to be happy. Or if I have this body, I'm going to be happy. But again, there are actual scientific studies on this that show that that happiness level is actually not changing very much when it's an income situation because you're still going to want more. That's one example. Um, with the whole Facebook and social media, social comparison, that is happening because our minds aren't thinking in absolutes, they're thinking with relative reference points. So when you're scrolling through and you're looking at upwards comparisons of people who you think are living better than you or have a better body than you, you're associating that with your happiness. And actually it plays into nothing because you can have that body and still not see that you have that body. And still not may bring you uh, happiness and, and joy, you still may be miserable because that's not necessarily going to actually like uplift you and bring you to a place where your soul is actually like thriving. It has nothing to do with anything other than social comparison. So um, if more people realized that and moderated their intake of content and was able to like differentiate, okay, like I see what this person's doing, but that has no, there's no influence on my life. We are not the same what's happening over there may not even be what reality is. So I think we all need to like kind of build up a little bit of a separation to understand these things and be more self-aware and outside of ourselves because it will not bring you happiness. The numbers show it. Yeah, I completely agree. Hi, as we end this episode, what are some tips that you can give our viewers to practice self-love and to become more like in tune with ourselves so that we can you know, go back to that little child and, and keep pursuing like those original dreams of who we are and like be our best selves and, and love ourselves. Like when something's hard for you, give yourself a hug, hold yourself and say, you're not alone. I'm here for you. You're okay. Yes. And sometimes, yes, when you put your head down and you say your name and you close your eyes and you say, I love you. I love you. I love you. It actually makes you feel so good inside. And you say your name, so you're like, Allie, I love you. Allie, I love you. Allie, I love you. You're okay. You're not alone. Don't worry. It's okay. If you made a mistake, you'll learn from your mistake. You don't have to live in that for the rest of your life. If you made a mistake, you'll say, I'm sorry, and you move on. So hugging yourself is very, very, very healing. How does it feel, Allie? <laughs> it feels good, especially in quarantine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have mirror work, so that's another way. What are some of the other ways that you want to know? Yeah, yeah. And also the gratitude idea is a great idea that, you know, you're just grateful for things around you, for the people around you. There's a beautiful prayer that we say, Mo Ani. It's a prayer of every single person says it in the morning. Thanking God for waking them up because we realize we're so lucky to be alive. So gratefulness is something that we do the first second we wake up to realize if I think in a positive way, I'll have a more positive day and I'll be on my way for a beautiful day. So let's say when you wake up in the morning, to before you even get out of bed, think to yourself, how could I be grateful right now? Oh, my blanket, my pillow, my, my warm shower I'm going to have in a few minutes, my coffee, the food, just five things that are coming into my day that I'm grateful for. And then before you go to sleep at night, Oprah Winfrey actually talks about it, that she does gratefulness before she goes to sleep at night. Five good things that happened to her that day. 
And this way you'll be able to be in a more positive mindset. If you go to sleep that way, you wake up like that. You wake up in a better mood. And also a very funny thing that I really love is dancing sometimes. When you need to just let things out, put on music and just dance it out. When you change your mindset, you change your world. So what does that mean? Like I think you're in a really bad mood and you're like, I don't know how to get out of this. Put on music that you love. Dancing affects your whole body, so your mind has to change. And I'll tell you one very, very cool thing. There's a book that everyone should read. It's awesome. It's by Gary Chapman, Five Love Languages. Do you know it? Yeah. It's the best book. And it lets you figure out what's your love language, because if you know what you love and how you need to be loved for yourself, you'll be able to just be in such a better place because you know what you love. I love gifts and nobody bought me gifts in a long time. So go buy yourself a gift. Be like, you work so hard. Buy yourself chocolate. Give yourself something. And when you give it to yourself, be like, I'm giving it to you because I love you. Right now, I'm letting you spend money and go buy yourself a treat because you know what, woman? You worked so hard this week. I want to give you a prize and give it to yourself. And when you give it to yourself, say, I'll do this because I love you. You mentioned knowing your love language, doing affirmations, you know, the mirror work, hugging yourself. There are so many things that you can do to feel better and to bring more happiness, joy, and love into your life, especially if you feel like you're not getting it from anyone else. Thank you so much. I hope you guys find more ways to find self-love in your life too and enjoy this episode. From your two favorite Jewish girls, I'm Gabby Lauren. We'll see you later. Bye, guys. I'm Allie Valerio. Have an amazing day, guys. Go hug yourself. Love yourself. Thank you.